Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, good night. Whatever time it is where you are, hello and welcome. It's so good to be with you this evening. Good to be with you again. And this time change thing has got me a little off balance, so I'm sorry. But let's get started anyway. Let me start with prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for this day that has gone before us. We thank you for the time, the space, the place where we are at this moment. The things that you've brought us through, the things that you've brought us to. We give you thanks for it all. For we know in all things we are to give thanks. For this is indeed the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus concerning us. So we thank you and we praise you and we glorify your name as we look into the session may your name be glorified may your kingdom be exalted may all that is said and done bring glory to your name in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen good to be with you blessings to you today is the 13th of march the year is skipping by yes the 13th of march so we'll do the 12th 13th and 14th with our little scripture thing that we're doing because we want to memorize the word of God, apply it to our heart, apply it to our minds, that we won't have to search for things to say or do when time comes for us to defend ourselves against the enemy because the word of God is the only thing that he fears. So we must make sure we have that right at our fingertips, right at our lips, to be able to declare it and decree it. Okay, so the scripture that we've assigned for the 12th of each month is 1 John 4 and 8. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, and it says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And number 13 is, for the 13th, it's Luke 1, verse 37, and it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And for the 14th, it's Deuteronomy 5, verse 7, and it says, Thou shalt have none other gods before me. So those are our three scriptures for uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, which would be the, the 14th of March. Okay, let's get started. Our topic this evening is Jehovah is gathering his troops. Jehovah is gathering his troops. Are we one of the troops that he's gathering? Let's check it out. Okay, many persons who have been moving around in church circles and Christian circles in recent times, some don't realize that we are enlisted in an army. Like, army? What army? Some don't know. Why? Because back in the day when we came to the church, the pastor told us, come to Jesus. Just come to Jesus. So we walked down the aisle, said the sinner's prayer, and figured out, hallelujah, now I'm safe. And because I'm a Christian, all my problems and sorrows are gone. They're over. And that's what they taught us. You know, you remember the statement, as long as you got King Jesus, yeah, that. Mm -hmm. You don't need nothing else. You don't need nobody else. Just you got King Jesus. But what we were not told about our relationship, this new relationship with Jesus Christ, is that the moment we make a serious, and I mean a serious, the moment we make a serious commitment, to Jesus Christ what kind of commitment a serious commitment to Jesus Christ we're not talking to those who about those who run around you know they run to Jesus when trouble start when trouble hit they run to Jesus looking for a life jacket why because now they're drowning and they're in trouble so they're looking for Jesus to help them out we're not talking about those people who we are talking about is the ones who decided after walking down that aisle and accepting Jesus Christ, they decide that on Wednesday nights, they ain't going to no club. They are going to Bible study. You accepted Jesus Christ and you're serious about it. Wednesday night, you ain't going to the club. You're going to church, to Bible study, to learn more about this Jesus you just accepted. The serious young lady would be the girl who, you know, she accepted Jesus Christ and now she headed to Bible study too. And what she's going to do? She is the one who tells her boyfriend that she's been hanging out with for the past five, six years. And what she says to him, buddy, I can't sleep with you no more. I can't be sleeping with you no more. I'm saved. Jesus saved me. That's a serious young lady. She's serious about her relationship with Christ. Or the young man who tells his drinking, his beer drinking, 
his rum drinking, pot smoking a friend. And he says to his friend, buddy, I'm not going to the club with you. I'm going to Bible study. I ain't drinking no more collect. I ain't drinking no more Hennessy. I ain't smoking no more weed. I go read my Bible and I go pray. Because I ain't going to hell for nobody. Not even you. Use my boy, but I ain't going to hell for you. Why? Because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I believe hell is real and I don't want to go there. I want Jesus to control my life. So, what he says, Jesus save me. I ain't doing it no more. I'm, I got a new life, a new relationship with Christ, and it's not happening. These are the people I'm talking about, the people who are serious about their relationship with Jesus Christ. So these type of people can rest assured that a bullseye was immediately placed on them by the kingdom of darkness. They immediately received the painting of a bull ma bullseye. X marks the spot. Yeah, you are under attack. The enemy is not joking with you. This is not a joke. This is not a game. They have officially become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So, Hell's Hit Squad has officially put their names on the hit list. Yes, you're serious about Jesus Christ. You're on the hit list. And it's, it's better for you if you know that. Because then you know, okay, I need to be careful. I need to pay attention. I need to study the word of God. I need to be serious about my relationship with Jesus Christ because hell has placed a bullseye on me. So let me take a moment to make a public kingdom announcement. You know how they make those public service announcements? I'm going to make a public kingdom announcement. Ready? Okay. Attention, attention. Every man, woman, boy, and girl who have made a conscious decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth, you are officially enlisted in the army of Jehovah God. Thank you. That's your public service announcement. You need to be aware of that. Now that you understand that you're officially enlisted in the army of Jehovah God, and now that you understand this fact, please stop expecting your life to be easy. Stop expecting your life to be a walk in the park. Armies are not safe spaces. The battlefield is not a safe space. You're constantly under emergency orders, basically, because it's an army. It's the war, war zone. It's not possible for you to think that you're going to be safe in a war zone. I mean, just randomly safe. It's always dangerous. Why do I say this? Because the word of God says it. It says it in 1 Peter 4 verse 12. And what does it say? Beloved, think it not, not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange thing is happening unto you, has happened unto you. You shouldn't think it's strange. It's a strange thing happened to you. That's not strange. That's expected. And what is this passage saying? Stop being surprised that everything for you is a fight. Everything for you is a fight. Think of the war zone. It's supposed to be a fight. You are in a war. The enemy is not playing with you. You are in an army. And what do you think is going to happen when you're in an army? Do you think that the soldiers out on the battlefield and battlefields around the world that are constantly, that are currently in battle, they are con currently enlisted and enrolled in a war? stationed in a war zone do you think they are sitting around thinking oh what is going on they know what is going on they know that they are in a war zone they know that any moment the alarm could go off and they could hear that a missile is incoming you know the sound incoming yes a missile is incoming they're always incoming why you are in a war zone they don't think that they are safe at any point they don't think they're safe they're not expecting anything else but missiles and bombs and explosions all around them. Why? They're in a war zone. And this is the, what the scripture is referring to when it talk about fiery trials. Fiery trials will come. Why do they call them fiery trials? Because they are hot. They are intense. They are hard. They are difficult. Yes, and when we have difficulties, we feel like, oh, what's happening? You are in a war zone. You are enlisted in the army of Jesus Christ. So stop, stop expecting a party in a war zone. 
we cannot expect to be partying or having a wonderful time in a war zone. We are enlisted in a war. We are enlisted in an army. We must get our spiritual lives in order. Because if we are just ignorant soldiers, oh, I ain't paying attention to no spiritual life. Just I walk the aisle, I said I love Jesus, and that's the end of that. No, no, no. You need training. You need understanding of the word of God so that you know that you are in a war zone. If you're an ignorant soldier wandering around in the, in the war zone, you know, this life we call life, what we call life, it's really a war zone. Why are you constantly in trouble? Why is bad things constantly happening? Because you are in a war zone. But some of us are crouched down in the middle of the minefield, wimping, whining, moaning, groaning, sucking our thumb and crying and asking, why me? Why me? Why me? You enlisted in the army of Jehovah. And you might say, I didn't enlist in no army. The mere fact that you want nothing to do with the kingdom of darkness means that you are enlisted in the war zone. You are resisting the enemy just by standing against him, just by saying no to him, just by when he tells you to sin and you say no, that's a resistance to him. So that causes you to be in the war zone. And if your position is that wimping, moaning, whining, groaning Christian, then you are at ground zero for a missile. You are ground zero for a missile from hell, a missile from the kingdom of darkness. You need to take cover in the Lord Jesus Christ. Take cover because our enemy does not take breaks. He don't take break, lunch breaks, dinner breaks. He don't take breaks. He don't take timeouts. He don't take vacations. Never, ever. Remember, he's an eternal being. He's a spirit. He never take breaks. When we get tired, wear down, wear out, go to sleep, he don't take breaks. He's in constant combat mode. Constant combat mode. That's him. Look at what Jehovah says in Job chapter 1 verse 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Hmm. To and fro the earth. Here is Job. They are discussing Job. Job is walking in total obedience to Jehovah. Walking, doing everything he can to please the Lord and to stay walking right standing with the Lord. To stay in right standing. And he is he's doing this in order to maintain his prayer life because he wants to maintain his prayer cover for his children who obviously weren't as spiritual as he was. So he's constantly having to keep a prayer cover over them. In order to keep that prayer cover effective, Job must constantly be in prayer, constantly keep his life pure. The Bible says be unspotted from the world. He has to keep his life pure. So when he goes to Jehovah on behalf of his children, he can get an answer, a positive answer, the protection that he needs for his children. Job is in constant prayer. He was not playing. So Satan has zero access to him. When we walk in righteousness, Satan has zero access to us. Remember what Psalms 91, 11, and 12 says? He shall give his angels charge over you. Okay, Job was a no-fly zone for the enemy. He was a no-fly zone for the kingdom of darkness. So, what Satan had to do? Satan had to go to God and ask for permission. So, Satan asked God to give him access to Job's family and Job's stuff. All the blessings that God had poured out on Job, he asked God if he could take all that away, destroy all of that. And because Satan was betting, why he'd ask God for that? Because he was betting that Job only was only serving God because God was blessing him. If you take away those blessings, Job will curse you to your face, is what the enemy actually said, what the devil actually said to God. He was believing and really betting on the fact that Job was only serving God because of the blessing. The abundant blessing because Job was rich. Job had cattle and, and oxen and sheep and camel by the thousands. Job was blessed and he had 10 children to boot. Three girls and seven boys. He had children and all the other blessings of life. So Jehovah said, okay. And the enemy went in and wiped it all out. Wiped out the children, wiped out the, the, the oxen, the all the Chaldeans and everybody came and carry off all the Job stuff. Carry off Job stuff. 
when he was done, he Job was left with just himself, his wife and his, I guess, his house and all his servants were killed. They were all destroyed because that's how the enemy functions. When he comes, he don't come to play. He come to take everything, everything that he possibly can. He's going to take it. That's why we have to keep our lives covered. And when he was done, Job sat and he was waiting now. The enemy is waiting now to see what Job was going to say. Okay, I don't take everything he have here. He's sitting now with 99% less than what he had before. So here's the enemy waiting now. Okay, let's see what Job's response is going to be. He's waiting now. And in verse 20, Job, Job chapter 1, verse 20 to 22, it says, Then Job arose after everything was taken away from him. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshipped. Who did he worship? The Lord God Jehovah. He fell upon the ground and worshipped and said, this is what Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. And the Lord gave, the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. After all that Job had lost, Job said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why did Job say in essence, and what, he, what Job was really saying in, in essence is that, buddy, I came here naked and I will leave naked. Whatever Jehovah allows is fine with me. Because remember, he understood that this was an attack of the enemy, but he knew that the enemy had no access to him unless Jehovah allowed it. So his attitude was whatever Jehovah allows to happen to me, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pow. Satan's plan exploded in his face. In his face. You know those bags with the dye in it? When you steal something and there's a bag with dye in it, when you go to open it, the whole thing explodes and you're full of yellow paint or yellow ink or yellow dust. Yes, it exploded in the enemy's face. And what did he do? He went back to Jehovah. He's, re he's resilient. He is, I mean, consistent, incessant. That's the way our enemy operates. So he went back. In Job chapter 2, verse 2, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth. This is all he does do. This is all he does. Going to and fro the earth and walking up and down in it. This is all he does going to and fro the earth, walking up and down in it. It's a wandering, wandering spirit. And we wonder why he is seeking a second shot at Job. So here he is now in the presence of the Lord, seeking this permission that he needs because he knows without it, he still can't touch Job. Why? Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Job already lost everything and Job still say, blessed be the name of the Lord. So he has no access to Job unless God allows it. Since the first game did not work, by, by his total surrender to Jehovah, Job told him to get lost. His plan didn't work. Job just sink into Jehovah. Job just lay his all on the altar. So, Job was telling him, get lost. I still love my God. So here we go. Job, he, he asked Jehovah if he could attack Job's body, Satan. Ask God if he could attack Job's body. See, I took everything he had, but he, he hasn't cursed you yet. He's still saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. But I bet if I touch his body, mm, because he ain't talking about no little touch. He's talking about heaping the pain and suffering upon Job. Because Job would definitely backslide then. He's sure he would backslide, backslide then. Because you know how we go as Christians. Lord, I serve you with all my heart. How you could let this happen to me? He was waiting for Job to take that attitude. What's the use for serving you if I'm going to suffer like this? Yeah, that's us. You know how we go. But Job was a warrior. Job was one of Jehovah's heavy-duty troops. Even when his wife gave up and rebuked him, his wife gave up. 
Look at you. You're a mess. Job's had, Job had boils and all kind of weird things going on in his body. The enemy did not. He took out, he pulled out all the stops on Job. Punished Job in his body. But what did Job say? His wife turned her back on God and said, you might as well just curse God and die. You hear talking about, blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at you. You're a mess. But Job stood strong. In Job chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, it says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still remain, retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall, what shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. You see, sometimes we can sin with our actions and we can sin with our words. Job did not turn back. He did not take back any of his blessing. He continued to bless the Lord. His language did not change. His worship did not cease. He just continued. Tell us why you're talking like a crazy woman. You sound like you lost your head. I will not turn back on my God. Job was like those soldiers, you know, the soldiers in the army who decide, if I'm going to go out, I'm going out in a blaze of glory. I'm going out with every, I'm going out in a blaze of glory. And saints, if we are going to remain strong and victorious, we will have to make the same kind of decision. And you know what the old saints used to say back in the day, what they used to say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. That can't just be words for us these days. That have to be a real, real commitment. What we're really, really, truly ready to do. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. Because Jehovah is gathering his troops. Are we one of them? Are we one of these troops that he is gathering? Now we have to remember, at the same time, the enemy is picking off those who are not locked in. Those who have not made a commitment. Those who are you know they're still hanging around and not sure what they want to do remember he's walking up and down in the earth he's just like in job's day walking up and down the earth searching for those that he can pick off he's seeking the weak ones the ones who are weak in their faith he see he's searching for them those who are undecided those who think they can straddle the fence those who think they can walk in two worlds Yes, they are going to be what the army calls collateral damage. They're going to be collateral damage. So if we haven't made up our mind as to I'm going to live for Christ or I'm going to just do foolishness, you cannot live in two worlds. What the Bible say? A man cannot serve two masters. And he will love one and hate the other. Yes, you cannot serve two masters. We cannot walk in both two worlds. We're either going to be for Christ or we're going to be for the enemy. Those that are lukewarm that Jesus said I will spew out of my mouth. Yeah, those, those will be collateral damage. Because Jehovah cannot protect you because you're not all the way in him. And the enemy has no good plan for you. And before you change your mind and decide, oh, I'm going to definitely go serve Christ. You straddle in that fancy area, pick you off. Why? You're undecided. You really haven't made a commitment to Jehovah. So Jehovah isn't guaranteed to protect you. You may have somebody praying for you that could keep you covered, but the enemy still has access to destroy your life. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's who you're looking for. He's looking for those whom he may devour. Who may he devour? He may devour those that have not made up their minds. Those that are going to church and still trying to live in the world and church on Sunday, save on Sunday, loss on Tuesday, worse on Wednesday. By Friday, you come back around to Sunday, you want to go to church again? Yeah, those who are playing games. Yeah, those are the ones that the enemy is picking off. This back and forth, up and down thing. We must be in constant forward move, motion. Jehovah is calling us and he's pulling us to himself. We must constantly surrender to that pull. We must be improving, growing, walking, running, never standing still. 
never stagnant in our relationship with Christ, never stagnant in our Bible study, our Bible reading. If you read one verse today, read two tomorrow, read three the next day. We must be making more and more progress. Why? Because the moment we find ourselves standing still in our spiritual growth, those bombs and missiles start hitting us. Why? We're a sitting duck. We are still standing, still target. Remember the statement, it's hard to hit a moving target? Exactly. It's hard to hit a moving ta target. If you're constantly growing and moving and improving in your spirit, the enemy don't know where to find you sometimes. You kind of you kind of don't know where to go to get you. Why? Because you're moving. You're a moving target. We cannot be sitting ducks because the moment we stop moving, the world system, the second thing about it, the world system begins to pull us backwards. You can't stand still in a tide. You can't stand still in a river. Especially one that's over your head. You have to swim against the tide. You have to swim against the flow of the water. If you stand still, the water or relax, the water is going to take you in the direction that it's going. And that's what happens with the world system. It takes you and it carries you along. Before you know it, you'll be back to your old ways. And that's why if Second Peter tells us in, 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 in Second Peter 3 verse 18, Second Peter 3 verse 18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Know more about him. Learn more about him. Inquire. Search. Seek. Search the scriptures. We must be growing. Improving. Always. We must. Because we all know that absolutely nothing in this world remains the same. You are either progressing or regressing. Progressing or regressing. Think about it. If you buy a car, a boat, a house... Anything in this world that you buy, that you purchase, when, you, when it becomes yours and it's your responsibility now, the moment you buy it, it starts to break down. It starts to break down. And if you don't make improvement or keep up maintenance, you find that it will not last. Before you know it, it'll be in shambles. So it is in our Christian walk. We must always be charging forward, pressing forward. Learning more and more about Jehovah through his word. Spending more and more time in prayer. More and more time in Bible study. Why? Because we are in a battle. Jehovah is gathering his troops. You do want to be one of those. Trust me. You want to be. That's the only safe place to be. Because if you're one of his troops, he got you. He got you covered. From head to toe, from end to end, up and down, in and out, round and round. He has you covered if you belong to him. And he is gathering his troops. We are in a war. And if we are not properly dressed and prepared, dressed in the whole arm of God, Ephesians 6, look through it. Put on those parts. I tell my prayer partners, I don't leave home without my armor. I don't leave my house. When I wake up in the morning to do my morning devotion, I put on the whole armor of God. I do not leave my house without putting on the whole armor of God. It is dangerous. If we could get a second, a glimpse of some of the plans the enemy has for us, we would never leave our house without first consulting the Lord God in prayer. Never. We are in a battle. We cannot underestimate this enemy. He is serious. He is dreadful. The only thing that keeps us safe is Jesus Christ. That's it. And if we are not building up our spiritual muscles, we don't. We won't be strong enough to fight against the enemy. If we don't go deeper and deeper in God and in his word, we will be vulnerable to the attacks of hell. They'll be able to walk in and out of our lives whenever they want to. That devil is a liar. The enemy will be able to destroy us. So we must grow, improve, increase in our knowledge of God. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. That's all he come for. To steal and to kill and to destroy. 
Whenever he shows up, that's all he show up for. Whenever his minions show up, that's all they show up for. To kill, to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. That's his agenda. That's the whole philosophy of his kingdom and his minions. That's all they come for. And that's why we, we must stop expecting anything but warfare from this world. Anything but pushback from this world. That's all they're supposed to do. We must continue on our days to walk with the Lord every day to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and if we are truly experiencing a genuine relationship with him we can feel him pulling us closer why we need to be closer because the enemy is ramping up his game he is ramping up his game we can look around and see the chaos is increasing the crazy things we thought would never happen in this world are happening right before our eyes from the germs, to the war, to the earthquakes, to the hurricanes, the tornadoes. Those of us who are seeking Jehovah with all our hearts, we can feel the challenge. We can feel the, com it's almost like a command. Get right. Come closer to me. If you, you're not close to me, if you walk out of my will, out of my way, what can I do? You walk into the enemy's hands. Draw closer to him. Why do we need to draw close to him? It's because the enemy is ramping up his game. He's ramping it up to such an extraordinary level. It's becoming scary to watch, scary to see. You're looking around and you say, what? Really? Some things you watch and it's like your mouth drop open. You're like, you can't believe it. Some of the things that are happening. But it's going to get worse. Sad to say, it's going to get worse. And this is what the word of God tells us will happen in this time that we live in. This is what he told us will happen in Luke chapter 21, verse 25 and 26. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexities, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring men's heart hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken these are scary times that we live in and while the church seems to be on go slow the enemy is attacking the saints and destroying lives everywhere just running through like running through with a sickle and anybody he hit he hit and that's them they gone and that's how he's handling it. That's how he's working. One might ask, what is going on with the church? Do we not see the disaster that the enemy is bringing to every facet of our lives, of our society? Do we not see that? Does the church not see that? Or do we just not care? Just doesn't matter. Just let the enemy run through and carry you wherever he wants and destroy whatever he wants. Can't we see the prophecies being fulfilled? all around us prophecies are being fulfilled Proph prophecy that we've been reading for years and years they're now like the front of a newspaper they're being fulfilled accurately and speedily they are being fulfilled everywhere you look like the prophecy in the book of matthew matthew 24 6 to 8 says and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We're seeing all these things happening right now. We see them happening day by day by day. We see them. We can check these off of our list of prophecies. They're happening all around us every day. The hor as horrible as they are, the scripture is telling us, though, that these are the beginning of sorrows. The end is not yet. Good Lord. Remember the contagious germ that we just came through? That was horrible. That was horrible with the drastic changes and restrictions. And it just brought us to a place where we like some people were really, really depressed and upset. Some people aren't back to normal as yet. It just shook our lives to the core. But verse 8 is saying that these represent the beginning of sorrows. You could imagine if this is the beginning and it's supposed to get worse. 
good lord one might say oh that's the small stuff small stuff that was catastrophic that was depressing and scary but says that it's small stuff it's the beginning compared to the real calamity that is yet to come to every born again believer in jesus christ to every child of god to every saint to every warrior kingdom citizen whatever we call ourselves it is time it is time jehovah is gathering his troops we must understand that this is all out war all out war and the enemy is not playing with us he cannot we cannot make choices that will defy the laws of jehovah when we make choices and defy the laws of jehovah we put ourselves outside the protective gear outside the protective realm outside of his protection we don't have that privilege in this day and time we don't have the privilege to play games we don't have the privilege to just be playing around out here we must live according to the dictates of the word of god because what we have in church what we have had in church over the years it's been people in the word of god who play games one day they're this way, one day they're that way. People are, who are proclaiming, they're proclaiming that they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, but their lives do not reflect the character of Jehovah. We must get to a place where our lives reflect the character of Jehovah. We cannot play games, time up for the playing games. And the other part of it is when we do things like that, we bring reproach and shame to the body of Christ. We bring shame and, and disgrace to the name of God. We give ammunition to the enemy to mock and ridicule the body of Christ. When we claim that Jesus Christ is the son of God, he's the king of the universe. Oh, he's my Lord and savior. But people see you and they look at you and you have no commitment to him. One minute you right, next minute you wrong. You claim your God is all knowing god king all this stuff and you have no dedication to him what kind of god must he be so see we bring mock and shame to the kingdom of god they don't fear and reverence him and obviously you don't fear and reverence him so he must not be such a great god and that's what we do when we violate the laws of god we claim that he's our god they claim he does not exist and both of both are acting the same way yeah, there's a problem with that. That's why the look of the church, the, the way the church looks today, people look at the church and say, y'all ain't serious. Y'all ain't no way serious. Because y'all ain't living up to what y'all claim the Lord is requiring of you. But like I always say, Jehovah is not a thief. He is not a thief. He knows who belongs to him, and he knows the one that he is supposed to be protecting, like he protected Joe, he knows who he's supposed to be protecting. And trust me, he's protecting them because they belong to him. Those are the ones that he's drawing closer to himself. The ones that he know belong to him, he's drawing them closer and closer to himself. Those are the ones that he's gathering and equipping for his army. Are you one of those that he's equipping for his army? Jump in. The water's fine. <laughs> Acts 2, 16 to 18 said, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Wonder why so much prophecy going on? That's what he said. They shall prophesy. The passage that saw uh, that Paul, the apostle Paul, was referring to in the book of Acts is found in Joel, in Joel two twenty eight to twenty nine. It says basically the same thing, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaiden in those days 
I will pour out of my spirit. So um, the Apostle Paul in Acts is just reiterating what Joel said in his book in the Old Testament. And what I love the most about this passage of scripture is the word all. All. It does not say some flesh. I will pour out my, of my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. This means that anybody who decides, makes a conscious decision to sincerely follow Jesus Christ, they qualify. Everyone qualifies. They qualify to receive of this outpouring of the Spirit of God. Any gender, any race, any color, any, any nationality, any age. All of them. All of us. Everyone qualifies as long as we're willing to make that commitment. Jehovah will use anyone who is willing to surrender to him, who is willing to come and absolutely surrender themselves to him. You can be a total nobody by man's standards because, you know, people, they cast you up very quickly. You don't have a big name. They look down on you and all that. Jehovah is not like that. It depends on your commitment to him. You could be a high school student. You could be somebody who didn't even finish high school. If you pick up your Bible and you decide this is the God I want to serve, he will revolutionize your life and he will recruit you for his army. So we just have to remember. It has nothing to do with the programs and the systems of this world. It's for his glory. It's about his glory. And Jehovah will use anyone, anyone, just like Job, all Job did was obey the word of God. And Jehovah had him locked in, totally rich, completely supplied for, and no problems whatsoever. The problem cranked up when the enemy showed up and asked for access to Job. But if you take the time, I hope you'll take the time to read the book of Job. At the end of the book of Job, Job had twice as much as all, this, all the blessings that he had. He, he had more children. He lived over a hundred years to be able to enjoy those children from the time he, he this whole tri um, situation was over, this whole test was over. When that was over, Job lived a hundred plus years after that. He was able to see his children and his gr ten more children and grandchildren. So, although Job, um, um, Job went through a lot, although he experienced a lot and he endured a lot, he was blessed a lot because that's the way Jehovah functions. He said, if you suffer with him, you will reign with him. He's not, he's not joking with that. He's dead serious. Dead serious. The apostle Paul and the prophet Joel said, what did they say he will do? He will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. This is the most exciting time to be a citizen or an ambassador of the kingdom of almighty God. This is the most exciting time. We get to live in the time when, you know, the power of God is really ramping up and really being poured out upon those that are serious. Those that just surrender and say, you know what? What the song say, if you're going to use anybody, Lord, you could use me. If you're going to use anything, Lord, you can use me. Once we get to that place, we're going to have, we're going to have a good time. It's going to be great. Let's say it's going to be big. Yes, it's going to be big. So strap in tight, saints. Strap on those boots. Put on that helmet, those boots, that belt. Take up that shield. Take up that sword. And put on that breastplate. And let's get moving. This is going to be good. Why? Because Jehovah is gathering his troops. God bless you, bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. I pray that something I said was a blessing to you. Um, let me pray, pray and close. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this special, wonderful time that you've brought us to the kingdom. Like Esther, you have brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. Father, help us to be strong and to be vigilant. Help us to study your word, to memorize your word, to stay in your word, to continue to use it to fight this good good fight of faith. Help us to continue to press forward, to lay hold on eternal life, that we may see you soon, knowing, Lord God, that you have all things up under your control. We pray, God, that as we continue to walk 
through this veil of life. We pray that we would draw closer, ever closer to you. We pray, Father, you said, none come except the Father draw us. So, Father, we ask that you draw us, draw us close to you, and never let us go. Bless us, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, bless you. Thank you once again for joining me. I pray that something I said resonated with you. And like I always say, you could have been doing anything else, but you decided to spend this time with me. Thank you ever so much, and may Jehovah continually bless your life. Goodbye.